Hello, it's Teresa here. Um, the first video since moving. So I'm actually making this surrounded by boxes and bags and all sorts of mess. It's still chaotic here, but I think it's going to be like that for a very long time. I'm in a tiny area in the bedroom now, and I'm looking out onto a busy road. Uh, but it's quite lovely because it's all green and I can see the trees. And behind me in the distance is the cathedral and the castle. So it really is lovely. And of course today, being in the UK, it is raining. Um, but it's lovely cosy weather. I'm just trying to ignore the unmade bed and all, all the other boxes and suitcases and everything. Well, as you can probably hear, I've lost my voice. So that tells you how stressed I am. I think I would generally tend to lose it when I'm stressed. But I think maybe a lot of us are the same. Now, I'm just going to run through some names. I'd like to thank you for all your lovely messages while I haven't been making the long videos. I hope you caught up with some of the short ones. Um, but um, I just really do appreciate your your messages. Like Lee Brennan, who said, I miss you. Thank you, Lee. And I miss you and everybody else, too. Um, Jean Stolfer. Gillian Brown, who made me laugh, Gillian, you made me laugh about the Mega Beast Jaws. I can assure you that journal, the Mega Beast, is quite safe, tucked away in a box somewhere. So, yeah, don't worry about him, G Gillian, he's safe. Anna Tronson, um, I hope you dealt with your boring look jean shirt and white denim jacket and if you have please put pictures of it on facebook because we'd all love to see the transformation um, and i do hope my explanation in the youtube comments helped nancy dybert sue smith so about the, the needle sizes don't get hung up on needle size you use the, the needle that suits you the thickness that suits your threads and I tend to choose one for a nice <laughs> nice long needle um, that will take six strands but don't get up on need caught up on what the needles are called and the numbers and that just go with your instinct in what suits you Kath, you made me laugh too. Kath Avalon, cutting up your nighty. <laughs> that reminds me so much of me. And this project that we're doing now, you'll find that I cut up a duvet. Aren't we bad? Aren't we bad? But that's a sign of great creativity, Kath. So you just carry. Oh, I knew that would happen. You just carry on, Kath, cutting up your nighty. Um, it's funny, Kath, because the phone's just gone, and that's Tess. You know Tess. Yeah, that's Tess. Anyway, Jackie Galloway, always nice to hear from you, Jackie. Linda Ware, welcome to Kent. You say thank you, Linda. Um, I might bump into you at some point because you don't live very far, do you? So, um, a lovely, lovely welcome, Linda. Thank you. And we have... Lynn on Richard Finney's phone. That's her husband. Lynn, you keep saying you're getting your own phone. You need your own phone, girl. So you twist Richard's arm. He's got to buy you a phone. He didn't get you one for Valentine's Day. Shame on you, Richard. Shame on you. Uh, buy your lady a phone. Okay? That was my teacher voice. Um, what did you say... Lynn. Oh yeah, Lynn, I think you said about, um, did I remember the weaving boards or uh, the pin boards as I was growing up? Yes, I do. We knocked little pins into a board and um, then we, we strung it, didn't we? Is that the right word? Strung it? Then we wrapped string from nail to nail and came up with some lovely patterns, especially if we use metallic thread. Um, yeah, I do remember that. That was a blast from the past, Lynn. So, um, 
Thank you all very, very much. And if I've forgotten anyone, I'm really sorry. But as you can imagine, things are chaotic here. Um, now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, um, this next project is going to be stitchery on a piece of work that we did some time ago, wet felting. And I will put the reference to it up here somewhere. And um, I hope you enjoy this. Um, I didn't really know what to do with this piece, but I think because I've been pushed for time and anxiety was high because I wanted to get a video out, I've gone back a step to the wet felt. And uh, those of you who follow me regularly will recognise this. So I hope you like where this is leading to. Okay, so as always, grab your cake, grab your coffee, Put your feet on the table and sit back and relax, okay? Only put your feet on the table if it's a coffee table and not a big dining table. <laughs> okay, so let's carry on. Yeah. You see the bands of colour here from the blues to the orange and down to the greens? I'm going to secure these bands mostly to hold it in place on the back of the fabric. Now it is quite secure on this fabric. I had already tacked it in the last project that um, we did with the felting. So this now is just ready to be embellished and I'm going to start here. Now at the moment I think I'm going to keep colour to colour. So green and to green, orange to orange, blue to blue and so on but I'm going to start here now we're looking at this at different angles again I'm looking at it this way and this is the way that I prefer It's it reminds me of um, some sort of organic form there you go now to me this looks like maybe flower stems and flower heads here um, set in the grass, the undergrowth, dark green, lighter green on top. I'm not quite sure what this is. This could be flowers as well in the distance. And then we have the sky, maybe a stormy sky. Now, this was quite incidental. It wasn't planned that way because if you see um, or if you remember the video that went with this for making this you'll know that it was just all the yarns were just dumped unmercifully on the calico background so this was purely serendipitous i think the word is um, purely a happy accident so now i'm picking it up it would have been interesting actually to see that if um, all my stuff hadn't gone and if I hadn't been left with just a box or two, whether I would actually have finished this. So this is a perfect chance now to, to have a go or to finish it, I should say. So I'm going to start here at the green and I'm going to spin it around to make it easier for me. So I'm going to start with this one. Now I'm using a really long needle and I do love this needle. It's three inches long, which is two, four, six, seven, seven point fifty uh centimeter centimeters, is that right? Anyway, so it's that long anyways. As long as my finger. And I'm using six strands. Now I don't normally work with six strands but I will do this time because this is so um, such a rich deep pile here I think anything less than six strands might actually get lost in the background so but we can see if it doesn't work out then um, I can always change it so right I've made a start there and I'm just going to do the running stitch right where are we I need to come up here. I'm just going to do the running running stitch on these bands and then sit back and see what other stitches I can introduce. But um, this should be fine at the moment for what I need. So I'm going under the other colours. 
I really am just following the green line and where it breaks I'll go under under the purple like that and this needle is just fabulous it really is you can load it with several stitches and I think um, it was a good choice actually to have the six strands because it's looking nice now when I get to the end here I should just change the colour of the thread and carry on and put the rest of the bands in so <clears throat> the bands now are finished I've put the slow stitch or the running stitch um, along all the bands to hold them down and you can see here how they're all being held down now or the fabrics being held down in place now while I was doing that I thought the next thing that I'll do is now change the colour change the colours I'm going to use a brown and I'm going up either side of the red not the purple just the red stems here well I'm calling them stems they're not really stems but I'm just going to go up and down either side um, and if I don't like if I don't like the effect then I won't do the rest in brown or I'll do something else at the moment it's just touch and go I'm not really sure what's going on with it but I will carry on I'm not sure if the brown is even strong enough to show against that red oh yes yeah just about just about so that's the red done um, and it's all all been outlined now in six strands of brown now while I was doing this I've decided that I'm going to do the purple in a pale lilac so I've no idea what this will look like but I'm going to do <laughs> I'm going to do it anyway so it's really not taking very long at all to do with this lovely sharp long needle and the fabrics the backgrounds are so um, soft it, the needle is literally sliding in and out hitting um, all the layers of fabric uh, it's a real joy so I'll carry on and it won't take very long at all and then um, I'll have a think about what I'm going to do next. So the lilac's been done now. I'm going to turn this around very slowly and make it a little bit larger so you can get a better idea of what's happened there. So you can now see better that the stems um, or the sticks or whatever they are, I mean that one actually looks like a gold club, but I'll ignore that. <laughs> You can see now that the shapes have been outlined, the long shapes, and they've actually left some really gorgeous shapes in between. Look at these beautiful shapes here. So I need to time now to think about what I'm going to do with these shapes. Um, and up here as well. Now the funny thing is, while I've been doing this, my daughter-in-law well, one of my lovely daughter-in-laws popped in and she's brought in some fabric um, knowing that my all my stuff is packed away and she has access to some be beautiful fabric and some of them are still on the hangers these are still on the hangers now I haven't actually had time to go through all these they're all white funnily enough so um, I think I've got an idea what to do with those but this one took my eye now if we look at this and I'll make it bigger this is just strange how it's all happened um, these look like flowers now they're very white a very brilliant white and I think at the moment they might look out of place on here being so white so what I'm going to do now I'm going to coffee dye a few or tea dye just a few to take that brilliance off and it's given me an idea that I think I'm going to turn this into a, a fabric collage 
fabric collage with um, some stitchery because these would make nice little flower heads but we'll see anyway but first of all I should cut some I just cut some off and um, I don't want to to cut too many of them because I don't want to ruin them um, when I could use them for something else it's, it's an awful shame to spoil them by seeping them in tea or coffee if I'm going to spoil them so I'd, I'll just do a few I'm trying to think if I have any other colours out there but I know um, everything is in, a bo in boxes all over the county now so um, I think maybe that might be enough and if I like it I can always do some more so I've just cut a few would have been easier with a smaller pair of scissors I think anyway. right so this is what I've got now so I'm just going off to coffee dye it and um, see what happens they're very small actually aren't they so um, yeah the stems are long they're small so this next piece of film has been done on my mobile phone in my kitchen and it's quite simple all you do is put maybe a dessert spoon or a tablespoonful of coffee into a bowl and add some hot water and then give it a good stir now the depth of color depends on how much coffee and how much water you use the more coffee you use and the less water you'll get a nice dark coffee or a nice dark fabric um, more water less coffee it'll be a paler um, effect place the lace just into the bowl of water or coffee and give it a stir make sure that it's fully submerged and all the pieces of lace are covered in coffee or it could be tea that you're using lift the coffee out and turn it over a couple of times and when you're happy that it's totally covered and the fabric has absorbed all the, the coffee uh, then just lift it out very carefully and place it on something where it will be allowed to drip dry I place mine on top of this old jar here um, but anything would do I started to cut up um, some of those pieces of lace that I've just coffee dyed and they look really nice you see here that I've cut I've cut several out from there now stick that over there and I think they're going to make nice flower centers maybe at the moment I've also got some old flowers here and that some of them I've used before others I've cut from <laughs> a duvet um, they've all been backed and these ones have also been coffee dyed now these started out as white as well and these were from a Christmas napkin or serviette so I think these look particularly nice there's just a gold thread running around the shape of the petals if you can see that and there's a couple of French knots there they're not handmade I say they because I think I've got about four or five of them um, yeah so they're not handmade they are machine sewn so I didn't mind cutting those out they're obviously mass-produced so what I'm going to do my next thing I'm going to place these now I've decided that I will have the leaves possibly down here now I have an assortment of leaves ranging from the blue and we have used these before I think we've used them for tail feathers um, and other things as well not necessarily um, in their current uh, form as leaves I think we've used them for other things so I think I'm going to put these darker ones down there where the sun don't shine I think they say 
I might put those there and then I have some green ones as well but I can't see the green ones um, well, I don't know what I've done with them and they're actually cut from this part of the duvet cover leaves there so I'm going to pop those down as well plique them um, I'm in fact working towards a collage uh, an applique collage these will go up here somewhere um, yeah, they're quite pretty and of course I've got these as well which I could put in the centre or I could use them yeah, that looks quite nice I could use them in their own right as little flowers little sort of bud flowers maybe but anyway I'm going to play around with these um, I'm not sure if I want to crowd it with flowers or um, just a few but as always happens it'll take its own shape these are nice leaves you can see those leaves there they're very pretty so that's gorgeous that one I love that one I might try and put that there's only one of those that's more like a centerpiece one isn't it and I love this one as well and I've only got one of each that's a beautiful green but anyway, um, I got lay weighed there, didn't I? Or should I say way late? <laughs> um, I'm going to spend some time just placing them and probably pinning them. And then I'll get back and show you how it's looking. This, I find, is probably going to be the hardest part of all, placing the flowers, the foliage. Um, hopefully it will just place one or two and it'll just fall into place literally but anyway I'm going to make a start on that now and I'll get back as soon as there's something to show you this is how far I've got so far I'm not sure if it looks too busy um, at the moment I've put them in place and I've just secured them slightly um, instead of tacking them because I'm not sure whether they're going to stay where they are I've just used a tiny bit of of glue under each one just to hold them in place um, I'm going to leave it now I'm going to leave it overnight so when I look at it in the morning I can see see it with fresh eyes um, I'm not sure I'm not sure how I feel about it actually but then this is possibly the scruffy stage as you can see by looking on the screen I've actually put the coffee dyes um, lace in the center of the other flower heads the other ones that were coffee dyed um, that I said had some French knots on them and there were only three of them actually one two three and then I've cut out some purple flowers from the duvet uh, cover in there and I've just put them like this in a triangle so um, it makes some sort of composition I do like the dark leaves now I did say I'd use the dark leaves at the bottom and maybe the brighter leaves or the white leaves at the top but um, I actually like the darkness here on the bright color and that looks quite nice but at this stage I don't know if I've used too many I don't know if maybe I, I need to take some off but as I said, I'm going to leave it now. I think about the stitch I'm going to use, and I think it will it will be running stitch in rows. Uh, maybe that's how I'm feeling at the moment. Although here I'm, on the sky, I'll probably have the rows coming across here. But for the time being, um, I'm thinking rows of running stitch going down to secure them all and then maybe I might do some stitchery on top but we'll see see how it looks in the morning and um, we'll take it from there well I decided to do a long stitch from the top to the bottom in rows um, covering it all instead of doing each tiny flower as an individual unit 
I thought it would look better this way and I'm quite pleased as you can see the lines can be a bit wonky and the stitches aren't totally straight but that doesn't matter that does that's no problem at all this is about how you work and your interpretation of it so I'm quite pleased with this um, I'm not sure what to do after this this is a close-up and you can see the stitches just a bit better now yeah and you can see just how wonky some of them are but i'm not taking them out they're staying like they are well since the last time you saw this my house move has been completed um i've now left the flat i'm in this lovely house in the medway and um, there are still boxes everywhere and packing cases but it has to be said most of the uh, mess is due to all the fabrics and all my art and craft stuff the workshops haven't been built yet um, so we're, it's a matter of just storing all my things around the house uh, it's not easy and it's not fair on everybody else but well we all know what it's like don't we artists crafters so anyway back to this I have managed to keep up to date with this albeit very very slowly although you wouldn't know by watching the video um, I've made quite a lot of changes here and I'll go through them from the this is my top to the bottom if I turn this around slowly I can do it in a way that will make sense to you watching it on the screen right there we go so um, buttonhole stitch, uh, sorry not buttonhole stitch, I secured these with um, and this with blanket stitch, I'm not sure if I mentioned that on the previous little piece of film, uh, so that's blanket stitch here and we have an outline of garden twine or string around there and then the same in here that's couch down with the same way I've done here that's couch down too with just a very tiny over sew stitch you can't see them here but here you can see them in orange now this here is a florist wire and all I did was wind the wire around a pencil until I had a coil and held it down in place it isn't neat it doesn't have to be neat um, but it looks very effective I can remember when I was a student um, doing exa um, exhibitions especially the final final art exhibition all this had to be gold thread and it cost an arm and a leg this has basically the same effect but it's a lot cheaper I think that was less than two pounds and there's a lot on there so I've put the florist wire here 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 and here and you can get it in silver effect as well now in the center of these and there I've placed just a couple not too many sequins just to catch the light here there um, these, this has been worked exactly the same as that, so as that, and so has that one. Uh, now, these, these um, coffee dyed or were they tea dyed? See, I can't remember at the moment <laughs> because my brain is still in mo moving modes. These here have been held down with just an oversew, nothing fancy over so stitch there uh, the same there and the same here so these big ones are over so now this round here has been secured apart from the long stitch that runs through it has been secured with very small running stitch or slow stitch and that depends on your mood and how you're doing it whether it's mindful or just tacking short tacking short stitch, satin stitch or running stitch uh, with French knots around there and they have been worked the same and here as well with the French knots so back to these two rows here of running stitch 
one row there, couple there, and here they've been worked the same. So I don't think there's anything else here. You can see brown over so stitch here on the edge. Nothing else there, no big surprises or anything. Now the next thing I do, <laughs> I'm not quite sure where I go from here. Um, it is looking good, I think. I'm going to just lift the camera slightly, just perhaps so you can see. You get a better idea like that. It definitely looks better hanging on the back of my computer chair. But that could be because it's on the black background and we haven't got all these distractions around here. But I'm going to carry on. I think, think these might need um, something. Uh, maybe these as well. Might, the shapes of these need to be picked out a bit better. Because if we look here, the little individual leaves aren't coming out. They're not noticeable. This just looks like an area of darkness. So I'm going to carry on with that. Um, yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. I don't know what to do with it at the end. So that, that will be um, something to think of along the way, whether I make it up into something. I always go for a journal cover if I'm in doubt because um, it's quite good for displaying things or a picture or we'll see anyway. I need to find my sewing machine first because um, I've got two of them, one for craft and one for clean, clean, clean like dressmaking uh, or sewing. I'm not sure where they are and I would imagine they've been bumped about and they might need a service now anyway. So we'll see but I'm going to carry on with the stitchery and I'm not sure which way it's going but um, it'll be quite exciting. Waiting to see. <laughs> okay, so I'll get back to you very shortly. Right, I think I'm going to call this finished now. Um, I've laid it on its side so I can get the whole piece in. And I'm just going to go through this very quickly um, because grass is being cut out the front. So I'm trying to avoid the gardeners. So I'll go through this quickly and just highlight what I've done. Now I'll start with the background. Between the two rows, each pair of um, long stitch going down I've put a row of feather stitch um, I'm hoping you can see it on there and the feather stitch I've got blue on blue here and further down I've got red on red and even down here there's green on green so the background is basically covered in long stitch and feather stitch with gaps between just for that contrast um, it serves another purpose as well. It really secures the felt um, to the background, you know, further secure it, I should say. The big flowers, I mentioned the outline before. These stitches here is um, long leg chain stitch, the orange, just long leg chain stitch. And here's a satin stitch topped with. Um, a French knot and I've done that here, here, here and over there. Um, so they've all been worked the same and that one there. And then we have pinwheel on some of these, the different colours, we've got the lilac and here the red. Once again topped with French knots. Here I've done further stitch in garden twine or string you can see all this and I will turn this round in a minute so you can see it the right way um, and then just around here I've put some French knots yellow French knots brought them down here into orange French knots but I'm leaving those as they are because you can see the leaves through here quite clearly and it looks nice now I don't think I've done anything else. I'm actually looking at a list. Um, did I do the feather um, 
French knots here on the last little bit of video. I don't think I did. So French knots there and French knots around there. Now, as I said at the moment, I'm going to call this finished. Um, can't think of anything else to put on there. And this is intended to be a short video um, just to catch up, really, and put something out there. Just going to turn this round very slowly so as not to make you dizzy and then I will move it up so you can get an idea of how it looks the right way up. I'll make that a bit smaller. There we go. So that is how it looks. Now at this stage I don't really think I'm going to make it up. Um, it does need to be made into something, but I don't know what I can do with it. So, if you have any ideas, and they, they don't involve the bin or the rubbish heap with a tip, let me know. And I might make it up, take one of your ideas on board and make it up. Okay, so I hope you like that. Um, and those of you who did this, the wet felting, perhaps you've got a piece where you can do similar on yours. It's really nice to do, it's lovely and soft as well. So there's, that is finished. <coughs> um, not sure what to do next, what our next project to be. Things are still up in the air a little bit. We'll turn that round a bit now, like that. Yeah, I mean, looking at it here, I'm, I'm very pleased with it. As I said, don't know what to do. I, it did cross my mind to line, obviously it needs to be lined, but have a little bag. Now, the thing that put me off, and it really doesn't matter, I mean, it's have to be neat and, but what put me off is that the front would be probably like that. On the back. Things would be going upside down. Oh no, they wouldn't actually. It wouldn't matter, would it? Wouldn't matter. So I might make that into a little pencil case, a little tool case of some sort. Just edge that. Yeah, I might probably do that. And if I do, um, I'll show you in another video. This one's finished. Okay. So take care, everybody. Um, keep up the comments and the face chat, um, YouTube and Facebook group and hopefully I'll get another project out shortly. And I hope you enjoyed the, the shorts that I did just to keep the channel working really. So um, anyway, take care. Uh, love to you all. See you soon. Bye bye.